And now the moment you've all been waiting for where we get to actually jump in and manipulate this image with our own two hands. Get dirty as it were with a brush. That's right, the new adjustment brush is how we're going to fine tune, do the final little touches on this uh, beautiful portrait landscape right here done by Sandy Foster. What we're going to do is we're in the adjustment brush icon at the top of the palette that's opened up its own little options palette. And now we're going to come over here and set the attributes for the brush. In this case, the actual tonality, we're going to start off with just a, a simple brightness adjustment. Remember, you can reset if you've got multiple different settings going on in the palette here. By clicking on either the plus or the minus is going to reset all the other sliders allowing you to just manipulate one at a time. We'll just do a simple brightness adjustment to start off with, knowing we can change anything at any time with these non-destructive local adjustments. But right now, coming down here to the settings for the brush, or what we want to look at, and in this case we've got size, self-explanatory, feather, these are both relative to the zoom factor of the screen. It's kind of nice. You can zoom in, do more detail work, zoom out, get a bigger relative brush. So that's where they're not actually pixel sizes. They're relative proportional sizes to one another. Flow is how quickly it goes from zero to whatever the maximum density is. Down the next one, density or opacity would be another way of looking at it is what is it going to do when you click with the brush once. If you have it set to 50, it does a 50% of the mask, much like 50% gray in an alpha channel that you would be painting with, or a mask in Photoshop. So there you have it. A lot of people start off with their brush's density set to 50 or less, and that way each stroke builds up the effect that they're going for. A lot of people start off at 100% knowing that they have the sliders that they can change after the fact. It's really up to you. I'm going to start off with 50 and a flow of 50 so I can brush in. I'm taking advantage of a Wacom tablet so I can brush in the effects gesturally. The last couple options down here are auto mask, probably the best masking built into Photoshop since it's so easy to also use the auto mask to remove or clean up a mask. It makes it incredibly powerful. And then of course we've got the ability to show that mask where we're working on it or hide it and then change the mask color. As a default that mask color is white. We'll start off with that just so you can see where you'll start off with. But you may want to change that to something like the traditional quick mask color of a transparent red. Okay we'll start off with that auto mask. We'll start off taking a look at it that's a little bit big. We're going to use our square bracket keys as a starting point just as in Photoshop that changes the size of the brush. If you hold down the shift square bracket keys that lets you change the feather amount of the brush. So both of those work just the same in ACR. We have it all set. First thing we're going to do is click within the area that has the most contrast with our subject matter and the background so that ACR and the brush knows what we're trying to do. It'll do a good job, won't do a perfect job, but as I mentioned before, you're going to be able to change it after the fact very easily. So I'm going to come up here, click on the model's hair, and you can see that it's doing a great job, in, but it, of course the dress is closer to the background than the arm. So I'm going to have to come over here and actually go over the arm and then ACR says, oh, I see what you're doing on the foot and the leg and the arm here. Is it perfect? No. But the great thing is, is that I can simply hold down the Option or Alt key. It switches it from Add to Erase, which is great. So I can come over here, change the size of the brush. We'll make it a little bit smaller. I'm holding down the Option or Alt key, that shortcut, so I don't have access to the square bracket keys. So I'm going to manually change the size of the brush, but you can see that the auto mask is also works in the erasing, erasing mode. So if I do get carried away, it's very easy to tell ACR, oh, that's what you were going after. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the reflection of the model down here. We'll start off just like that and maybe even come in and do a little bit on the shin and the inside. Okay, so we've got it. That is set. Because we started off with our density, you can see we can actually look inside. We can see our model. It's not going to be 100% of the effect. And actually, I like that. A little bit less chance 
of it getting that paper cutout look uh, when you're doing an adjustment. Okay, so with that, let's hide the mask and see what our adjustment did. We've already had it set to a 40 plus brightness before, after, before, after. That may be all that we need to make the image pop. Remember that you can change the visibility for what they call the pins or showing of the pins by tapping the V for visual or visualize. Okay, so we can just simply tap in there, get our before and after. The P key gives us our preview, so we can tap that. Really, that's all that I wanted to do in there. Something subtle makes our model pop out just that much more.